As North Korean troops prepare to join Russian forces in the war on Ukraine, Kiev is stepping up a psychological warfare campaign to target the North Korean soldiers, a high-ranking Ukraine official said. The Ukrainian military intelligence service-run project I Want to Live released a Korean language video message on YouTube and X. The project also posted a Korean language text message on Telegram. The messages urged North Korean soldiers to surrender, arguing that they do not have to meaninglessly die on the land of another country. It also offered to provide food, shelters and medical services. U.S. says it expects North Korean troops to enter combat against Ukraine in the coming days in Kursk. Ukrainian servicemen, with the help of the Kursk operation, have gained an advantage over Russia that they have never had during the entire full-scale war, experts say. According to them, it consists in the fact that the Ukrainian armed forces do not need to defend any of the Russian cities in the Kursk region. You just fight where it's advantageous and retreat when it's not, and that's a really effective way to fight. Rand Corporation military expert Michael Bonnert tells Business Insider, the war on its own territory has reportedly caused the Ukrainian military to cling fiercely to some cities until it had no choice but to retreat. Bakhmut is one example. The report says, the full-scale war has put Ukraine at a disadvantage, experts say, since most of the fighting is taking place within the territory of one country. However, that changed in August with the start of the operation in the Kursk region as the Ukrainian armed forces can now take advantage of the terrain and fight in the most effective way. And they can do it without consequences. Bonnert said, adding that these are not Ukrainian cities, so the Ukrainian military can choose the most advantageous positions for combat and defense in order to be able to build fortifications. Stimson Center military expert William Alberk noted that Russia has so far recaptured the easiest parts and that the Russian occupiers will have a much harder time dealing with the rest of the Ukrainian bulge. Ukraine, he said, can choose when and where to defend itself. Albert also added that Ukraine could create kill zones and traps to slow down Russia's advance since there is no need to defend the entire stronghold. It's a huge operational advantage for a commander when you don't have to draw any lines in the sand, he said. The U.S. has identified around 8,000 North Korean soldiers in the Kursk region. This may take part in combat operations in the coming days, according to a statement from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He noted that, according to U.S. estimates, there are about 10,000 North Korean military personnel in Russia. The most recent information indicates that as many as 8,000 of those North Korean forces have been deployed to the Kursk region. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days, Blinken specified. According to him, the Russians are training North Korean soldiers in artillery, drones and basic infantry operations, including trench digging. This indicates that the North Koreans are being prepared for use in frontline operations. If these troops engage in combat or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would be counted legitimate military targets, the U.S. Secretary of State emphasized. Ukrainian aviation expert Anatoly Krapchinsky believes that Russia is hiding some weapons production facilities at civilian airports. When we discuss strikes on Russia's production sites, we need to consider places like Tactical Missiles Corporation in Korolyov near Moscow, which makes KH-101 and KH-555 missiles, as well as UMPK modules. There's also Arsenal 53 and the Sverdlov plant, which was recently hit by Ukrainian forces. However, we must recognize that Russia may be concealing some production facilities in civilian cities, even using regular civilian airports he said on Espresso TV. Anatoly Krapchinsky pointed out that this conclusion comes from the locations where Iranian planes have delivered weapons components. Why do we think this? Because we can see where Iranian planes are unloading their cargo. They have flown directly to places like Kazan to unload, but they don't. We need to understand that Russia is using some civilian sites to produce the drones that are launched into Ukraine every night. This is happening in both the Moscow region and the Leningrad region, the aviation expert explained. 
Despite being limited to the use of long-range kamikaze drones, one method employed by Kiev has scored some spectacular success in recent weeks. One of the largest explosions of the full-scale invasion saw, in the words of a security service of Ukraine source, an ammunition warehouse literally wiped off the face of the earth in Tver Oblast last month. This came just days after Ukraine confirmed attacks on two other arms depots, with the UK Defence Ministry saying the combined strikes caused the largest loss of ammunition in Russia during its all-out war against Ukraine. While the destruction of Russia's crews and ballistic missiles by Ukrainian drones seems an obvious target for Kyiv's military planners, more recent strikes show the campaign is far broader. It now includes ethanol distilleries producing industrial alcohol. Russian military aviation cannot function without alcohol. Andriy Kovalenko, head of the Counter-Disinformation Department of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, said in a post on social media, as well as the strikes on ammunition depots, Ukraine has continued to target Russian factories, most recently the Kremny L microelectronics plant in the Russian city of Bryansk. When you target an adversary's capabilities, there are always two ways of doing it. You either target the capabilities themselves, like the missile storage sites, the aircraft that carry them, etc. Or you can target production. Fabian Hins, a research fellow for defense and military analysis at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, told. Russian troops regularly abuse and torture Ukrainians. Ukrainians from occupied settlements told the New York Times about how enemy soldiers treated them. A group of reporters conducted research, including dozens of interviews with former prisoners of occupiers, representatives of human rights organizations, and Ukrainian officials from the Prosecutor General's Office, Intelligence and Ombudsmen, in order to find out how the Russians treat Ukrainian residents in the occupied territories. One such story was shared by a man named Yevgeny, he lived on the seashore in southern Ukraine. According to him, in December 2022, eight masked men in Russian military uniform came for him and sent him for interrogation. The occupiers kept Evgeny in a locked basement. They beat the man with their fists, a crowbar, poured water on him and suffocated him with a plastic bag. My legs, my buttocks, everything from the waist down was black, recalls Evgeny. The man noted that he could not lie down for six weeks after the beating. He had to sleep sitting in a chair. Evgeny added that his limbs and muscles did not work and the skin on his hands was cracked. It took eight months to recover, the man said. A local doctor told him he was not the only person tortured in that basement. The publication stated that Russia is trying its best to hide the atrocities of its soldiers in temporarily occupied settlements of Ukraine from the outside world. Nevertheless, human rights organizations, Ukrainian prosecutors and government officials manage to closely monitor the situation based on the stories of civilians who live there or have managed to return to the controlled territories. Human rights activists believe that Russia's ultimate goal is to destroy Ukrainian identity. To achieve this, the occupiers use propaganda torture, forced acquisition of Russian citizenship and sending Ukrainian children to the Russian Federation. According to the United Nations, Russia occupies about a fifth of Ukraine's territory, home to more than four million people. The publication noted, the fate of Ukrainians living there is one reason why President Volodymyr Zelensky does not agree to a peace deal that would involve territorial concessions to Russia. In addition, human rights groups and Ukrainian officials estimate that the Russians are forcibly holding about 22,000 Ukrainians. Of these, about 8,000 are prisoners of war and the rest are civilians. Earlier, paramedic Ekaterina Polishchuk, call sign Bird, said that the Russians tortured Ukrainian defenders who came out after the battles at Azovstal on a daily basis and interrogated them. She emphasized that the medics were not allowed to provide proper assistance to the wounded. In addition, the Vakovna Rada Commissioner for Human Rights, Dmitro Lubinets, confirmed that in the Kharkiv region, Russians are torturing Ukrainian defenders who are in captivity. 